The Jack Benny Program, presented by America's largest selling cigarette, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, first again with tobacco men. Yes, first again with the men who really know tobacco, the independent buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen. For a recent impartial survey shows that more of these independent experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Remember, these are the men who, year after year, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And for their own personal smoking enjoyment, they choose Lucky Strike. So let this overwhelming smoking preference of the experts lead you to real deep down smoking enjoyment. Light up a Lucky. Puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means a world of smoking enjoyment for you. That's why you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. It's Saturday morning, and Rochester is dusting the living room. Uh-oh, look at that big spider web in the corner. I'll get the broom and... No, I better take this one down easy. The last time I broke a spider web, Mr. Benny got awful mad. He likes to starch them and use them for doilies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll take it down later after I dust the piano. Well, that takes care of the piano. Now for the other room. Hmm, that's funny. I'm not even near the piano. There it goes again. I better look inside. Just as I thought, a mouse. Oh, well, I'll finish my dusting and then I'll... <laughs> That's what he gets for not belonging to the union. Oh, Rochester, Rochester. Good morning, boss. Did you have a nice sleep? I sure did, and now that I think of it, I had the most pleasant dream. You did? Yeah, last night I dreamt that Hosea Turby was giving a piano recital. I could hear it so plainly. Well, you won't hear it tonight. <laughs> How do you know? Hosea's in the trap. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What you heard last night was a mouse. He was in the piano. Oh, oh. Say, by the way, Rochester, my whole gang and I are going to the football game, so as soon as they get here, let me know, will you? Okay. What's that? Must be another mouse. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. He was so talented, too. <laughs> Phil Harris could have used them, you know? Oh, by the way, boss. Yeah? I noticed there was a little memorandum on your night table that said something about calling your agency. Oh, yes. I'm glad you reminded me, Rochester. I got to call my advertising agency, Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Batten, Barton, which and who? <laughs> Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. They handle my radio show. I'll have to get the number from information. Information? Uh, operator, I'd like to get the number of Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. How do you spell that, sir? B A T T E N B A R T O N D U R S T I N E O S B O R N. What's his first name, please? <laughs> <laughs> operator, that's the name of an advertising agency Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Oh, I'm sorry. One moment, please. Thank you. Can it be the Brias that fill the Brias <laughs> with rare and magic perfume? La, 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 la. Uh, here you are, sir. That number is Hollywood 7 3 3 7. Thank you. H O 7 3 3 7. Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Oh, miss, this is Jack Benny. I'd like to speak to Mr. Batten. Mr. Batten isn't in. Oh. Well, then give me Mr. Barton, please. Mr. 
Barton is in Chicago. Oh. Well, uh, then could you connect me with Mr. Durston? Mr. Durston is out of town for the weekend. Hmm. Well, then I'll speak to Mr. Osborne. Mr. Osborne's line is busy. Oh. Shall we go around again? <laughs> No, no, no. I'll wait for Mr. Osborne. Very well. I'll answer the door. Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Glad to see you, Miss Livingston. I heard you had laryngitis last week. Oh, it's my own fault. I never should have tried to talk Mr. Benny into giving me a raise. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I didn't mind. If you talk to Mr. Benny about money and all you lose is your voice, you're lucky. <laughs> I know what you mean, Miss Livingston. Last time I asked Mr. Benny for a raise, I got laryngitis, locked jaw, glove across the face, and a challenge to a duel. <laughs> what? With bicycle pumps at 20 paces. <laughs> a duel with bicycle pumps? Oh, we don't try to hurt each other. If I blow his toupee off, I win. <laughs> hello, Jack. Uh, hello, honey. How do you feel? My girdle is killing me. Operator, I was talking to Miss Livingston. I'm sorry if I disconnected you. No, no, Operator, just get me Mr. Osborne's office. Uh, Jack, who are you calling? Bat and Barton, Durston and Osborne. Sounds like a trunk falling downstairs. <laughs> yeah. Say, Jack, what about the football game? I'll be through in a minute. And anyway, the rest of the gang isn't here yet. Uh, who's playing today? UCLA against USC. It'll be a good game, even though both teams have been beaten. Beaten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. <laughs> Operator, I'm holding the line. I'm waiting for Mr. Osborne's office. Jack, I hope the gang gets here so we can leave early. Why, what's the rush? Well, the last time we went to see Southern California play UCLA, you wouldn't pay a dollar to park near the Coliseum. So you kept on driving. Well, certainly. Then you wouldn't pay 50 cents for parking. You still kept on driving. Well, listen, they're not going to rob me. You wouldn't even pay a quarter. Look, Mary. Then you wouldn't pay a dime. Well, Mary, you'll have to admit one thing. When I finally found a parking place, we saw an exciting game, didn't we? Yeah, Georgia Tech versus Arizona State. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? We saw a game. If they weren't playing at night, we'd have missed that one, too. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, I'm never going to pay a dollar just to park my car. What do you think I am, a millionaire? Yes. <laughs> Well, I want to stay that way. <laughs> and another thing, Mary... Mr. Benny, I can give you Mr. Osborne's office now. Good, good. Hello, this is Mr. Osborne's office. Is there anything I can do for you all? Huh? Oh, this is Jack Benny. I'd like to speak to Mr. Osborne. Oh, Mr. Osborne, just step into Mr. Duffy's office. Duffy? Uh, who's Mr. Duffy? Uh, he's the president of Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Hmm. Well, can you ring Mr. Duffy's office for me? Just a minute, sugar. <laughs> I'll turn you back to our little old switchboard operator. Just hold on, please. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> Will you please ring Mr. Duffy's office? I'm sorry, but Mr. Duffy's line is busy. Just hold on a moment. All right, I'll wait. Say, Mary, I noticed you handed Rochester a package when you came in. What was it? Oh, that was the present you gave me for my birthday. You can have it back. But, Mary, I thought those doilies were beautiful. All I know is they keep catching flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Mary, if you don't appreciate... There's the front door, Rochester. Oh, I'll get it, Jack. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Say, where'd you get that beautiful tan? Oh, I took a boat trip on my friend's yacht. Look, here's a picture of me taken in the cabin. Well... Gee, what a big cabin. It has a porthole in it and everything. A porthole? Yes, there it is. Oh, my goodness. Well, what's the matter? I thought it was a Bendix and threw all my clothes in it. <laughs> Who is it, Mary? Albert Einstein. <laughs> oh, come on in, Dennis. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm calling Mr. Duffy of Batten, Barton, Durson, and Osborne. That's my advertising agency. Why do you need them? Well, Dennis, they put on my program for Lucky Strike. They handle all the publicity, the exploitation, the advertising, the commercials. They hire the musicians, the writers, the actors. They do everything. Why do they need you? <laughs> 
Because they want a comedy show and I'm a comedian. Then who's Mr. Duffy? He's the president. President of what? Of Batten, Barton, Durstle, and Osborne. Jack, why are you getting so mad at him? Well, I can't help it. He's such a stupid kid. Oh, he is not. I am, too. <laughs> huh? Who else would throw his clothes out of a porthole? I don't know. Batten, Barton, and Durston. What? Osborne wouldn't do it. <laughs> Miss, look, I'm holding the phone here waiting to speak to Mr. Osborne in Mr. Duffy's office. Mr. Duffy's line is still busy. Will you hold on, please? Yes, yes. Now, Dennis, while we're waiting, let's hear the song you're going to do on the program. Okay. Okay. I'm still connected. Operator! Operator! Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Look, this is Mr. Bennigan. I'm still waiting for Mr. Osborne. Now, he's in Mr. Duffy's office. Oh, yes. I can ring Mr. Duffy's office for you now. Thank you. This is the office of Mr. Duffy, president of Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. <laughs> Miss, this is Jack Benny. Is Mr. Osborne in Mr. Duffy's office? No, sir. He just left for an important conference at another advertising agency. Oh, do you know which agency he went to? Yes, he went to Sullivan, Stauffer, Caldwell, and Bailey. Oh. Well, miss, I'm very anxious to speak to Mr. Osborne. Where is the office of Sullivan, Stauffer, Caldwell, and Bailey's? On Coenga, Gower, Argyle, and Vine. <laughs> Coenga, Gower, Argyle, and Vine? They used to be on Washington, Jefferson, Madison, and Tippecanoe. <laughs> Tippecanoe? And Tyler, too. <laughs> Well, maybe i better not bother Mr. Osborne. Just let me speak to Mr. Duffy, please. I'm sorry, but while we were talking, Mr. Duffy stepped down for a minute. Would you like to hold on? Well, all right. Oh, by the way, Dennis. Dennis, that was a swell song you just sang. I, I think it'll be great on the program. I'm not going to sing it on the program. I'm quitting your show. <laughs> quitting again? For what reason? I've got plenty of reasons. Plenty. Well, give me one good one. All right. I've been working for you for nine years, and I've never had a Sunday off. Ha, ha, ha. 
Well, for hep... Look, Dennis, Sunday is the day we do our broadcast. Excuses, always excuses. <laughs> What? Why don't you broadcast on Saturday? Because that's the day you do your program. I do? What time? Eight o'clock locally and 10 o'clock in the east. Who's my sponsor? Colgate. Oh, I'm supposed to be dumb, but look at the plug I got. <laughs> plug? That's a fine plug. We're in my house. Who heard you? Batten, Barton, Durston, and Oscar. <laughs> Look, operator, this is still Jack Benny. I'm waiting to talk to Mr. Duffy. I'm sorry, but Mr. Duffy had to rush out to see Murphy, Garland, Kirby, and Dill. Oh, is that another agency? No, that's the USC backfield. <laughs> oh, 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 and oh. But Mr. Osborne is back. I'll ring his office. Thank you. Mary, this will take a few minutes. You and Dennis wait for me in the library, will you? And Mr. Osborne's little old office. <laughs> Look, this is Jack Benny again. I'd like to speak to Mr. Osborne. I'm sorry, but Mr. Osborne is busy on another phone. Will you hold on? Yes, yes. Oh, by the way, Miss, has the agency always been Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne? No, it, it used to be just Batten, Barton, and Durston. Oh. Well, why did they take in little old Osborne? <laughs> Oh. oh, I see. But wait a minute. If it's Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne, how did Duffy get to be president? Huh? And they were his little old cars. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'll let you know when Mr. Osborne is through talking. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, you little old possum push. <laughs> Gee, she sounds cute. I'd like to meet her sometime. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm on the phone. The rest of the gang is in the library. Okay, Dad. Hey, look, before I forget it, I want to tell you that we're going to have a substitute guitar player in the orchestra tomorrow. Remley has to go out of town to see his brother. Well, why does he have to go tomorrow? It's the only visiting day in the month. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't know that Frankie's brother was in again. Yep. What's it for this time? Same as always, counterfeiting. <laughs> Did they send him back to the usual place? Yep, he's first again at the federal pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how'd they happen to catch him this Jumped time? Jumped the gun, he put Dewey's picture on a $10 bill. <laughs> Frankie always was an eager beaver. Huh? <laughs> Look, Phil, I'm busy on the phone. Well, I can't wait, Jackson. I'm driving Alice to the game. Oh, is Alice outside? Why don't you bring her in? Well, if we drove up, I got a flat. She's fixing it. <laughs> Phil, you mean to say you're letting Alice fix a flat tire? Don't worry. I called the newsreels first. <laughs> well, so long. I'll see you later. Okay, Phil. Sorry I couldn't talk to you, but I'm trying to get my agency. Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Well, when you get them, tell them to give their regards to my agency. Who's that? Bottle, bourbon, thirsty, and chaser. <laughs> oh, Harris, if your brain had a meter on it, you couldn't pay the bill. <laughs> oh, fine, some brain. Well, I'll see you at the Coliseum. So long, Cliff. Cliff? Hey, Alice, you can wash your hands when you get to the game. Don't bother about it now. What a guy. You know, Phil is the only man I know who oh, can... Oh, Mr. Benny, you still holding on to that little old phone? Yes, is Mr. Osborne ready to talk to now? Uh, no, but he'll be ready to talk to you all soon, sure enough. Oh, uh, say, miss. Uh-huh. You're, uh, you're from the South, aren't you? No, I'm from New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the way you talk... I bought these teeth in Alabama. <laughs> Oh. Well, honey, child, it's my lunch hour, and I have to go, but I'll switch you back to our little old operator. Okay. Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Miss, uh, this is Jack Barton. 
I mean, Benny. Jack Benny. I'm still holding on to speak to Mr. Osborne. Yes, sir. I'll connect you when he's ready. Hold on, please. I'm holding. I'm holding. <laughs> Gee, I can't understand why Say, I... Jack, if we wait any longer, we'll be late for the game. Yes, yeah, sir. We're going to go now. Yeah, I wish I could go with you, but I got to talk to somebody at my agency. Well, say, Mr. Benny, when I had lunch at the Brown Derby, I saw Mr. Osborne. He was in conference with Hennessy, Tennessee, McCarthy, and O'Brien about a new radio show. <laughs> Hennessy, Tennessee, McCarthy, and O'Brien. Is that an agency? No, that's McNamara's band. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, Toodle the Flute, and the music, something grand. A credit now, to Dennis, 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 McNamara. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> I'm not long for this world. <laughs> Dennis, I'm on the phone. Get, gee, Mary, the least you can do is wait for me. This is business. Oh, all right, all right. I'll be with you as soon as I get Batten, Barton, Durston, and Osborne. Oh, Miss, Miss. Osborne, Durston, Barton, and Batten. What? I just thought I'd break the monotony. Oh. Well, what about Mr. Osborne? Right now, he's talking to our lawyers, Rockford, Saffir, Ballin, and Lady Esther. Lady Esther? What's she doing there? Just a minute, I'll ask her. Look! I'm in no mood for jokes! Now, look, I've got a business call to make. I'll get it, boss! Never mind, Rochester. Come in! Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Don. I'm talking on the phone. Come on in. All right, Jack. Oh, I've got a big surprise for you. I brought along Spurzel, Stevens, Days, and Bell. <laughs> Spurzel, Stevens, Days, and Bell? No, this is Batten, Barton, Durst. I know I... that, miss. Look, and I'm talking to Lady Esther. I mean, Don Wilson. <laughs> Don, who are Stevens, Spurzel, Days, and Bell? Why, you're Quartet the Sportsman. Isn't that right, fellas? Hmm. Look, Don, I'll be with you in a minute. This is a very important call I'm waiting but for. But, Jack, the boys want you to hear a commercial they've worked out. And Mary's in it, too. I am? What do I do, Don? Mary, please. Look oh, at this I... is great, Mary. You love it. Are you ready, fellas? Don, can't you wait till I get off the phone? But, Jack, it'll only take a minute. But, Don, how can you do it? There's nobody here to play the piano. Shall I let Jose out of the trap? <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, operator! Operator! Take it, fellas! Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> We love something, yes we do We love something the same as you We love something, do we not? Love that something, but we won't say what Didn't take us long to fall Just one bluff and that was all Now we buy them every day But what it is, we will not say We love something, yes we do Try and guess it, here's a clue Made of light and fine tobacco Round and firm and fully packed I have a lady in the balcony, Doctor. For six silver ashtrays, see if you can give me the correct answer to the following. What is America's largest selling cigarette and why? Well, according to a recent survey of all southern states, more independent tobacco buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike than the next two leading brands combined. And why not when they're so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the little old draw? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. F. E. Boone. We love luckies, yes we do Love those luckies the same as you There's no better in the land You made Lucky Strike your favorite brand O-L-S-M-F For deep down smoking pleasure There's no greater treasure Smoke one at your leisure Lucky Strike Don, congratulations. That was one of the best commercials we've ever had. And you know, and to show my appreciation for your good work, starting next week, I'm going to give you Hello, a... Hello, Mr. Benny. Thanks, miss. <laughs> I can give you Mr. Duffy's office now. Good, yes. Mr. Duffy's office. <laughs> Look, uh, this is Jack Benny again. Uh, can I speak to Mr. Duffy now? Yes, yes. Oh, hello, Mr. Duffy. Uh, this is Jack Benny. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. How are you? Fine, fine. Now, Mr. Duffy, the reason I call is this. You see, I've been with Lucky Strike now for five years, and there's one thing I'm not too happy about. You see, but I... Mr. Benny, we're doing everything to keep you happy. I know. We're I know, giving but... you adequate funds for exploitation, and you have an unlimited traveling account for your entire show. I know, and Mr. Duffy. And we du increased your budget for musical arrangements, as you requested, and also for your cast and writer. Yes, and yes. And you I... also have our permission to broadcast from anywhere in the country where you feel most happy. I know, Mr. And Duffy. And we have given you the most important guest stars that money can buy. I know, but... what, but... Mr. Benny? 
What is it that's bothering you? Well. Well, what? Well, here it is almost December, and Lucky Strike hasn't sent me my 1949 calendar. <laughs> I've waited and waited, and I can't... Hello. Hello, Mr. Duffy's office. Miss, I was just talking to Mr. Duffy. What happened to him? He jumped out the window. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. I'll call Mr. Osborne tomorrow. Come on, kids. Let's go to the football game. Ladies and gentlemen, the majority of America's hospitals now have patients waiting to be admitted. And the situation in many areas is growing steadily worse because of insufficient nursing personnel. All young women between the ages of 17 and 35 who are high school or college graduates are urged to apply for admission in any one of the 1,300 accredited schools of nursing. Apply to the one nearest you. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... At 6 American. An impartial survey covering all the southern tobacco markets reveals that more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Yes, Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. Remember, these men are the experts, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. Men with years of experience buying, selling, and handling tobacco. So it's important for you to know that the overwhelming choice of these experts is Lucky Strike. You've heard the survey results. Now here's what Mr. Ed L. Isaacs, veteran tobacco warehouseman, who sold on an average of two and one half million pounds of tobacco a year recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe, good tasting tobacco. The kind of tobacco man really goes for. I've smoked Luckies for more than 15 years. A Lucky Strike smoker for more than 15 years. And remember, Mr. Isaacs, like you, looks to the cigarette he smokes for enjoyment. Real deep down smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means a world of smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> Jack, here's the Coliseum. Where are you going to park? Oh, I'll find a place, Mary. I'll find a place. Park here for the football game. One dollar. Hmm. Park here for the football game. Fifty cents. Hmm. Park here for the football game. Twenty-five cents. Hmm. Mark here for the bullfight, one peso. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to hear the Lucky Strike Hit Parade starring Frank Sinatra every Saturday night over this same network. And be sure to listen to Jack Benny on the Elgin Show, Thanksgiving Day. And don't forget to stay tuned in to Phil Harris and Alice Faye, who follow immediately, and to Dennis Day in the day, uh, in the day in the life of Dennis Day, <laughs> each Saturday. Get ready, day. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.